Setting up pricing is a multi-step process with many factors to consider. Our table shows us all of these factors and provides a visual to help us to understand the process. Across the top are item data and customer data. In our system, every item has a number. This number is searchable and represents the item. For example, if I want to find item 100076, I put that in the search field and press enter. This number pulls up an item in my database. If I want to order that item, I click Add to the Cart. And on my order invoice, I have my item number. This number follows this item throughout the entire process. Furthermore, every item fits into a product category. For example, if I go to electronics and I go to phones, phones are categorized under electronics. When we go back to the table, the next column on our table is customer data. Every customer has a number in our system. For example, if I went to search for customer number 160, I come up with Positively Pasta. So Positively Pasta is always going to be customer number 160. To finish out that column, each customer fits into a customer type. Although these are user-defined, we have created three categories for explanation purposes. Suppose I sell window tint on my website. The first category of customers to whom I sell are retail. These are customers who buy window tint from my website and I ship it to them. The second category are jobbers. Jobbers install window tent as a service. This group buys window tent from my website and then installs the tent for which they are paid for their service. The third category are distributors. Distributors buy tent from my website and in turn distribute the window tent for others to sell. If we return to our table, we notice that our table has two rows. The first row is labeled individual, the second is labeled group. On the individual row, the price relates to one item number or one customer number. We are dealing with one. On the group row, the price relates to a group of items, product category, or a group of customers, customer type. This explains the overall setup of the table. On the inside of the table is the real content. There are eight ways that you can set up your pricing. The first, the white box, is labeled item number. This means that item number 100 sells for a set price, say $10. You can set your prices according to the item. The second way to set your prices is according to the customer number. Rarely would you say that one customer gets all items for $10, but you might want a customer to get a percentage off of the item. Here you would say that customer number 100 gets 10% off all of the items purchased. The third way is to price according to the product category. Maybe you want to say that all electronics are 15% off the list price. The fourth way is to set your pricing according to customer type. For example, you may want all retail to get 5% off the list price, all jobbers to get 10% off the list price, and distributors to get 15% off the list price. 
those are four ways to set up pricing. But now we can make combinations of those four types. You can have a combination of item number and customer number. This is also known as contract pricing. You agree to let customer A buy widget B for $10, while you sell customer B the same widget for $12. Or you could have the combination of item number and customer type. This means that retail gets item number 100 for $10, while jobbers get item number 100 for $9, and distributors can buy item number 100 for $8. The next pricing combination you could select is a combination of product category and customer number. This means that customer number is able to purchase items from a category, say phones, for 10% off the list price. The last pricing combination is product category and customer type. This would allow retail to purchase a product category such as phones for a discount, say 10% off the list price. Jobbers could purchase phones for 15% off the list price, while distributors could purchase the same phones for 40% off of the list price.